In this video, I'll work through a problem where we can talk about revenue, cost, and profit, and then answer a question about the rate at which profit is changing. So in this problem, we're given formulas for revenue and cost, and we're asked to find the rate at which the total profit is changing when X items have been produced and sold. Notice that they're asking about when X items have been produced and sold. That means that what we're looking for here is a formula rather than a number. So we want a formula for P prime. What does P prime of X equal? That's what they're asking us for. Well, the first thing you need to know for this problem is the relationship between profit, revenue, and cost. And the relationship is that profit equals revenue minus cost. Or in other words, P of X is equal to R of X minus C of X. And we have formulas for R of X and C of X, and so we could subtract those two formulas to get a formula for P. But what we really want is a formula for P prime. So if we take the derivative of both sides here, P prime of X is equal to R prime of X minus C prime of X. And that's just using the difference rule for derivatives. So what that means is that if we can find a formula for R prime and a formula for C prime, we can just subtract those two formulas and get our formula for P prime. So let's do those two problems separately. R of X is 1200 times the square root of x squared minus 0.1x, and c of x is 2200, x squared plus 2, all raised to the 1 third power, plus 900. So let's start with r of x. We want to find r prime, so the first thing we're going to have to do is rewrite that square root using a fractional exponent. So that's going to be x squared minus 0.1x, all raised to the 1 half power. Remember, square roots get rewritten as 1 half exponent. Now when we take the derivative, r prime of x, the 1200 is a constant multiple. With that function raised to the 1 half power, we're going to use our extended power rule, which says that we start off just like the regular power rule. We bring down the 1 half, the inside function stays the same, and we lower our power by 1. If we take 1 half minus 1, that gives me negative 1 half. But that's just half of the extended power rule. The second half of the extended power rule is that I have to take the derivative of that inside function. The inside function is x squared minus 0.1x, and so what's going to go here is the derivative of x squared minus 0.1x, and that's just going to be 2x minus 0.1. So that's my formula for r prime. What's my formula for c prime? Well, similarly, the 2200 is a constant multiple, so that's just going to stay there. Using my extended power rule, I bring down the 1 -third. I leave the inside function alone. Take that power 1 -third and subtract 1, that gives me negative 2 thirds. And then I multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is 2x. 900, the derivative of 900 all by itself, that's a constant, so the derivative of 900 is 0. So my formula for p prime would just be the difference between these two answers. And for this problem and for problems like this, we don't have to simplify our derivatives. So 1,200 times 1 half, we could write that as 600, there's nothing wrong with doing that, but we don't need to do that simplification, so I'm just going to leave it. So I'm just copying my two answers, and I'm going to put a big minus sign in between them, because the derivative of profit is r prime minus c prime. So there's r prime that I've just written, and then minus c prime, 2,200, 2,200 times 1 third, x squared plus 2, the minus two-thirds times 2x. That is my answer. 